And those fish, again, they'll get right up on top. The water's starting to cool off. They want those vertical areas. But as a general rule, this is the time of year that I'm definitely chasing bait balls. I'm chasing fish offshore. I'm looking for isolated boulders and, and breaks in the rock and then you see on the Great Lakes, all those types of areas. And I'm, most importantly, I'm looking for big, big schools of smallmouth bass. My favorite time, I got my Sims bibs on the full time. I've got my hoodie on and I'm just covered in smallmouth poop because that's what we're doing all day is scooping big smallies into the boat. Some of my baits. Uh, an umbrella rig does tend to work. Lake Mille Lacs, where I'm from, it, it'll play. We can only throw one hook, but we don't even have shad there. So it's not my number one bait. Uh, but you go to other areas around the country where they got shad and stuff, it's really going to be a, a fish biter that time of year. A heavier Ned rig. Uh, that same perfect Ned head I said I was using before. Now I'm just up into the 3 16 and the quarter ounce sizes, throwing those out into deeper water. 15, 18, 20, 25 feet. 30, 40, depending where you're at in the country, a football jig. My baits are getting bigger. In the spring, everything was sized down. Now, everything's grown, and at the same time, those smallmouth know that they have a real cold winter ahead of them. So they're gonna be eating up. They're gonna be eating big baits. This is power fishing time of year. I'm throwing that big football jig. Generally, I have more bait casters on my deck this time of year than now that I have spinning rods. Uh, so that football jig or the paddle tail. I went from having the little three inch paddle tail with maybe an eighth or a quarter ounce head to a four or five inch paddle tail with a quarter with a three eighth half ounce size head on a little bit bigger hook because I'm looking maybe a tulip bee spawn is right around the corner you have so many things that are happening but one thing's for certain they are eating they're in big schools and they're eating bigger bait so that's definitely an area that I'm going to go to uh, you're also going to look for targets okay i'm looking for stop signs this time of year i'm looking for areas out on the out on the water that these fish are going to stop as they're migrating so they come off that post spawn and they're going to work their way offshore right before winter comes that big group is going to be right there at the very end of it and it's just going to be a giant school but as they're making that migration they're stopping on key things they're stopping on transitions they're stopping on boulders if there's brush piles drop offs all rock just good rock piles chasing bait around that's the kind of stuff i'm looking for and i'm just trying to hit them as they go you know coming off the dog days of summer and into that late fall bite like these couple little boulders here not much they ain't that big but they're just a little bit bigger than the rest so to me that gives me something to stop at I don't necessarily, it'd be like a good analogy, be going someplace like Lake Kissimmee and somebody handing you a Cinco and saying, fish the lily pad. Great, there's a lot, a lot of lily pads out there. Same thing, you come to Mille and I hand you a Ned rig or a tube and say, go fish the rocks. There is rocks everywhere. So if it's all rocks and I'm idling through using my structure scan and it's all rocks and I can't find anything different, no cracks in the rocks, no drop offs, no bigger rocks, smaller rocks, whatever it is, I'm just going to keep going. Will I catch fish? Maybe. But how do I duplicate that on a day-to-day -day process, day-to-day -day deal? I don't know that I can. So instead, I'm collecting stop signs. And if I run them like, like you would in the cell fishing brush piles, if I run enough stop signs, I'm going to end up with a big bag of small moss at the very end. And again, this is just before they're going to start schooling up. If they're in those big schools and they've made that migration, they've transitioned out, and you're looking for stop signs, you might have a long day as opposed to the fishermen that are out there taking advantage of, those, of the competition that you have in those real big groups. And that's my presentation. That's the migration. That's the, the migration of smallmouth bass in the northern part of the United States. That's just how they're going to move. That's how they're going to chase bait. Um, that's what they're going to do. Ice fishing, I'm not an ice fisherman. I'm sure you can catch them that way. It ain't my jam, but I'm sure you can. But if you do, if you're in an area like New York and stuff that can take advantage a little bit more of that winter time, think about going back to hair jigs, maybe football jigs with buck hair on them. Definitely blade baits are going to be a good one, and that's single swim bait if you can. But 